The original mission, if you look at it, was relatively simplistic, but it was Nick's road to recovery and how he was going to utilize this experience to benefit the lives of other people. With respect to Nick's situation, is that it was really completely out of his control. And then having the maturity at 19 to say that, wow, my life can have a positive influence on someone that I'm never gonna meet. I don't think it was anything more than Nick's desire to focus the rest of his life, for however long that was, on trying to help others. So the shoelaces really has have become so important to the organization and really are our signature and what we've uh, become known for. Um, and that's where it all started, um, you know, just brainstorming around our kitchen table and Next, you know, determination about standing up this disease and really becoming an advocate for it. And he said, I need to find a way to, and he, and he went just like this, to tie the lacrosse community and athletes to the cause. And then he just looked at me and looked at all of us and said, shoelaces. Drexel University during um, their first regular season game against University of Virginia in 2007 took the field wearing headstrong laces. Uh, by the end of the game, we're talking about Nick Hallory and his legacy and the importance of the lime green. It was almost a launching point at that point. Um, there was a lot of interest around the laces from that point on. So as we were leaving the hospital, after the doctors had told us that there was nothing more they could do for Nick. Of course, he got situated in the front seat. Before we even pulled out of the parking lot, he grabbed my hands, held my hands, and said, we need to have a conversation. We're going to talk about this today, and we're never going to talk about it again. And uh, the first thing was the organization, and to take the foundation to greater heights, the greatest heights that we can. And really, his whole focus that he made me promise that other people would benefit from the life that he lived, that he did not go through this experience for naught. So this is my promise to my child. We're just really proud of the effort so far. Um, the Headstrong Foundation has really grown over the past, you know, since our inception now, seven years ago. Um, we've generated about $5.5 million in Nick's name. And uh, our focus really is hands-on families. Uh, improving quality of life for those that follow in his footsteps affected by blood cancer and supporting those that are working so hard to eliminate the disease. I think our services really resonate with families because whether it's financial assistance or providing lodging through Nick's house or the research piece uh, or the quality of life services, everything is built around trying to help families sustain normalcy. And when you take a look at the spirit of lacrosse, you'll notice that the sport is made up of some incredibly great families always very generous, willing to do anything and everything for the greater good and to grow the game. And I think that's something that makes Headstrong very present and very relevant to the sport. So our Nick's House initiative really developed once again from our family's own experience. And at the end of Nick's life, um, we were displaced down in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, we went to the National Institute of Health um, in an attempt to save Nick's life. We said, if ever we have the opportunity to provide a home-like setting, somewhere where it's very, very soothing and peaceful and you know you can move in and make it your own and it's instead of a room, it's, it's a home. 